Welcome back to Colster's Classroom. Thanks for visiting. As I've been reading through the chat rooms on social media, I've seen two questions popping up a lot. One of them is, should I become a teacher for those people thinking about entering the profession? And the second is, I've seen a number of veteran teachers asking, should they remain in education? Which is uh, kind of sad that they're having to ask that question, but let me help you answer that question by asking eight questions of my own. So let's take a look at this and in a few minutes we can figure out, should you become a teacher and should you stay in, in education if you're already in education? So let's begin. My first question is, why do you want to become a teacher? Why do you want to teach? Why do you want to enter the field of education? So what is your mission statement? What do you stand for? My mission statement is to make the world a better place for my children by educating the future of America about the importance of the environment. When things get tough, that's my go-to. That's what, when I have to dig deep to go back into the classroom or things uh, are a challenge, I fall back on that mission statement. And I, I probably think about that mission statement a couple times a day throughout my 25 year career. I, I always fall back to that mission statement. What is your mission statement? I challenge you to come up with a mission statement and that should be your default. That should be your driving fundamental reason for getting into this profession. So think about that. When you have that question answered, you've answered the first and most important question that I have to ask you is, what is your mission statement and how is education involved with that? This is what you're gonna fall back on when you have to dig deep and things become a challenge. This seems like a silly question, but it's really important. Do you like kids? And if you like kids, which age group do you work best with? For me, I love kids. Um, I don't know that I would make an awesome elementary school teacher. I would not look forward to that many preps. And um, I'm not a real touchy-feely guy. And I know in elementary school, they hug on you and you have kids all over you all of the time. Uh, but I make an awesome high school teacher and I probably make a pretty good middle school teacher. I actually was an assistant principal for middle school for a year and did just fine there. I enjoy their sense of humor. I have the sense of humor of a 16 to 18 year old. So that's a question you have to ask yourself for real is do you like kids when they're sick and hurting and they're looking for guidance? Uh, sometimes you'll end up with homeless kids. How much do you like kids? Um, that's important. And which age group is important to you? When you stop liking kids, and there, believe it or not, there are teachers that sometimes I think really do stop liking kids and are just there for a paycheck, it's time to wrap it up because you're no longer helping, you're part of the problem. So ask yourself, do you like kids? And if you're a veteran teacher, do you still like kids? Do you still like their sense of humor? And if you need to revitalize yourself, do so. Dig deep and uh, remember your mission statement and why you started this journey. Uh, because at some point you wanted to make a difference and um, go back to the basics, back to your roots, and get excited about going in and being with them. This is the question that I think gets a lot of people. There are a lot of well-intentioned people out there who want to become teachers and want to make a difference. But you have to ask yourself and be honest with yourself to answer this question. Do you have the temperament to be a teacher? Again, I repeat it. Do you have the temperament to be a teacher? Good intentions don't work well if you don't have the temperament for it. You have to have patience. Kids are going to challenge you. That's their job. Uh, if you've raised any, you're going to be challenged all the time. You have to have a sense of humor. Again, if you don't have a sense of humor, it's going to be a long school year for you every year. You have to have the ability to not take things personally. Understand if you raise your own kids, I've raised two kids, they have both graduated college at this point. They're going to test you. They need to understand the bounds, the boundaries. They need to understand the rules. They need, they will continue to challenge you to figure out what is their place? What are the rules? Um, and if you're a teacher, you're gonna be challenged every single year and you have to learn not to take it personally they're just trying to figure out the rules, who they are, where they're, they fit into society, what is their role. That's what kids do. Um, and if you weren't teaching the same age group every year, you're gonna be challenged in the same way every year. As a matter of fact, having done this for 25 years, I can tell you 
at what age. I, I can tell you that when the students get a car, typically when a teenager gets a car, they're going to have to discover what the rules are and test the boundaries again. That's just simply what they do. All right, so you don't take things personally. Do you have the ability to forgive? When kids screw up, and they will, 100%, the one thing I can guarantee you is kids will screw up, and sometimes they'll do things that uh, might even be personal to you. They might uh, tell you something or say something to you that you just have to get past and forgive. If you don't have the ability to forgive and move past things like that, you're going to struggle in this profession. And the ability to use misbehavior is an opportunity to teach empathy. When students make mistakes and hurt others, hurt you, it's an opportunity to teach them empathy. So all of these things go back to that question. Do you have the temperament? You're going to be challenged daily. Almost every single day, kids are going to test you, test the boundaries. You have to learn not to take it personally. You have to be able to forgive and you have to have patience. If you have all of that, you have the personality to be a hero and be a teacher. All right, next question is, are you coachable? Essentially, if you have answered the last four questions with yes, and you have the personality to teach, you can be a hero, you can be a teacher, because we can coach everything else as long as you're coachable. If you're coachable, we can fix anything, any problem that you have as far as classroom instruction, classroom management techniques, all of those things can be coached. Really, the question is, do you have a mission? Can you work with kids? Do you like kids? Do you uh, have the personality where you can forgive their misbehavior and teach them empathy and teach them to be positive contributing citizens? If you have those things and you're coachable, you're in pretty good shape at this point. I have a couple more questions for you, but the key thing here is if you're coachable, we can fix whatever's going on. Teaching is really a team effort. And you get support from colleagues. Your colleagues will be also teaching some of the same students that you're teaching. And hopefully you have a support system at home. So my next question is, do you have a support system? Do you have support from your colleagues? Do you have a support system at home? At my house, we call it Team Cole. I get supported by my daughter, my son. They both take things off my plate. My wife is awesome at supporting. As a matter of fact, sometimes she comes in and substitute teaches. Matter of fact, sometimes the kids will, if I'm uh, barking at them too much, they'll say, maybe you need to take a day off and send Mrs. Cole in today. So do you have a support system? And if you don't have a support system, it's important you build one. So this is something that you can build if you don't have one, but it's very important that you do have a support system. This is another area where I see veteran teachers and new teachers really struggle. Teaching is the most important job in the world, bar none. I, I truly, at the bottom of my heart, believe that. Teachers are heroes, and we hold the most important job in the world. We create all the, the heroes. We teach all the heroes. We teach everybody of significance, and again, it's incredibly important. But understand it is a job. At some point, you will retire. At some point, you may leave. Um, it's a job, and you have to be able to balance your work-life balance. If you aren't balancing your work-life uh, balance, you're going to break down. You're going to become ill. Uh, you're going to burn out. You need to treat it as a job, and it's very, very serious that you put some things in place to uh, create that work-life balance. I highly recommend, if you've not watched it, I've created a video about teacher time management. I would definitely encourage you. There's some tricks on there to help you reduce your grading time. There's things that will help you with your work-life balance. There's hidden minutes over the course of the day that you can use to uh, help create a healthy work-life balance. So highly recommend that you watch that video if you've not watched it. It's, this is incredibly important because otherwise you will burn out and we'll lose a very, very good hero. And we don't want to do that. You need to take care of you. You need to take care of yourself and come up with that work-life balance. All right. It's sad I have to ask you this next question. 
but teachers are public figures and role models, so this is important. Can you live a public life of high character? Essentially, teachers are public figures. Everything we do reflects on the profession, reflects on the school, reflects on a number of different things. So also understand that your emails can even be subpoenaed and sequestered as public records. Everything we do is as a public figure. So teaching isn't just a job, it is a lifestyle. It's something that's 24 seven and every decision you make has impact. This comes back to temperament. Are you going to, uh, do you get into arguments or fights? These things could not play out well if, uh, if you don't have the right temperament. And decision making. Um, if you are caught with a DUI or something and it becomes public record, trust me, at the high school level, your, your photo of being arrested is going to be on everybody's cell phone as their screensaver. So it's important that you have good decision making, good temperament, um, and it can be something as innocent as even having a side job. I was reading a few years ago about a teacher who was trying to make money on the side as a strip dancer. She was a, a strip club uh, dancer and um, word got out and actually I think it went into the, the court system. But in the end, uh, I believe she lost her job and the, uh, it's important that you represent yourself and the profession as a role model that you are. So can you live a public life of high character? Teachers and coaches are quite often the dinner table subject matter for the evening. So there's a lot of times where you are gonna be the uh, dinner table discussion, just keep that in mind. It's a powerful and important job that we hold. You already knew this. You're not gonna become rich as a teacher. So the question you have to ask yourself is, can you live on a modest budget? The money we make is not terrible, especially initially starting. Initial starting teacher salaries are typically competitive with a lot of other industries. It's later on in your career that you're gonna get frustrated with the amount that we're paid. So hopefully someday we get this fixed and teachers are paid their value, but currently the governments are broke. Um, we're, we're trillions of dollars in debt. So uh, teachers are, are not going to be paid their market value anytime soon. So you need to look at success in terms of lives changed and not in terms of monetary gain. That's an important concept though, is uh, if you can't live on a modest budget, now's the time to make that switch because once you become a teacher, um, you're, it's gonna be basically, you understand what you're getting into, which is modest budgets, it's a livable budget. If you are a single parent, it could be a challenge. If you are single by yourself without kids, it's livable. If you are married, it's probably livable. Really depends on your spending, but you're not gonna get rich as a teacher. Just keep that in mind. If you answered that yes to all of the questions I asked, and you have a strong mission statement, you'll make an outstanding teacher. Everything else is coachable. I really mean that. If you like kids, care about kids, want to make a difference, welcome to the most important job in the world. We change lives. That's what we do. So you will make an outstanding teacher because everything else is coachable. We can fix everything else if you want to be a good teacher. You just have to like kids, like your subject matter, and if you have all those things going for you, you can be a hero. I'm only going to touch on the state, state of education right now because I'm going to do an entire presentation on the state of education in the United States right now. But we have a lot of headwinds facing us as teachers. COVID-19 permeates everything in society, and it's leading to the remote learning issues that a lot of states are still facing. And even in places where we have in-person learning, we have a war over masks. That's not helping things. It's leading to budgetary issues. Here in Florida, uh, a large portion of the teaching budget or education budget is tourism and COVID-19 is impacting that. Another thing that drives people out of the profession is red tape. There's uh, law after law made, but a huge number of in-services that teachers have to complete. Eventually it becomes very, very cumbersome. 
School safety issues. We hear about schools shootings and different things all the time. These are all headwinds facing education right now. We will fix them because we always do. That's what we do. But right now, uh, the state of education is not awesome. There's definitely room for improvement. So um, we'll get through this. If you have the temperament, love kids, and want to be a hero and change lives, stick it out. Fight through this. All right, as teachers, you need to get used to change. Politics come into play. Education is a very, very exciting, sexy issue for politicians, especially at the state level. Whether it's gubernatorial races, state representatives, state senators, education will always be a huge topic because those are the things the state controls. It was left by the United States Constitution as a state issue. So they will always make it an issue. One party who's in power will always try to show how education is uh, improving under their leadership or doing well under their leadership. And the party that's not in power will always challenge it, stating there needs to be improvement. So we're under constant flux and we will always be a political issue, understand that. So as long as you teach, it's gonna be political. Also at the school board level, that's the entire purpose of running for school board is to affect change in education. It's, it's sad because it'd be nice if we had some stability, but it will always be a sexy political issue that will be debated uh, by whatever politicians are involved. Teachers are heroes. If you've answered yes to all the questions I've asked you, and you have a mission statement and a purpose, you like kids, and you have good temperament, come be a hero or remain being a hero. For those of you guys in the profession, remember what got you into that. Get revitalized, get excited. We change lives. We have the most powerful job in the world and we can affect change. We can help fix all those problems out there. We can fix everything. Everything, I truly believe this, everything can be fixed through education and we need you. So if you're new and thinking about becoming a teacher, you're about to become a hero, I encourage you to stay the course. If you're a veteran teacher and you're struggling and on the fence, reach out to that support system. If you don't have a support system, build one or rebuild it and continue being a hero. Remember what got you into this to begin with. Watch my video on, uh, I think it says teacher hype video. Watch the teacher hype video and it will remind you who you are and what the hero that you are. So dig deep and remember who you are. Remember, we change lives. That's how you should measure yourself, not in dollars. Become a hero, remain a hero. If you're a teacher, I love you all. You guys are awesome. I'm so proud to call you my colleagues and go out there and rock it and teach those lessons and change those lives and go out there and just have a great year this year, guys. Thanks.